So I came across a really simple but beautiful proof of the fundamental theorem of algebra on the internet. It is a theorem by none other than the Chad Gauss himself and it says that any polynomial with the degree n has exactly n complex roots. So before going on with the proof which actually contains zero lines of algebra, what I will do is I'll break some of the terms and then we'll see we'll also see the a geometric interpretation of what multiplication really is and then we'll go on with the proof so first of all let's see what is a, a polynomial so a polynomial is really just a function in which you ra you're raising x to some whole number power so something like x to the 4 plus 3x squared minus x minus 5 this is a polynomial also to note here is that the highest power of x is in a polynomial is called the degree of polynomial so this is a degree 4 polynomial now let's look at what are roots roots are really just points on the plane where the graph cuts the x-axis or you can think of them as solutions to f of x being equal to 0 so for example if i take something like x minus 1 x plus 2 its graph will look something like this here is minus 2 here is 1 we can see that here there are exactly two points where it is cutting the x-axis which actually also corresponds to our theorem because this is the degree 2 polynomial this will be x squared plus x minus 2 it's a degree 2 polynomial it has exactly two roots so you know it matches up but we can quickly realize that things are really not so simple for example if we take x squared plus 1 equals 0 this graph will always be above the x-axis it will be something like this the lowest it goes is 1 comma 0 so even though this is a degree 2 polynomial and it should have two roots this we can see it never cuts the x-axis at least for real values so here we can actually define complex numbers uh, complex numbers are really a set of numbers which have a com uh, an imaginary part and a real part so they are in the form a plus b i and the reason why they're of re real interest to us is because well first let's say you start out with defining number sets you say okay one two four you know all these positive integers they're, they're a number you can say that they are whole numbers so every whole number you put in this certain box but then you can create a bigger box which contains that that smaller box and that will be the integers because all the whole numbers are themselves integers but integers also have some more numbers such as minus one minus three and so on and then you can extend this you can put this in an even bigger box and you can call those fractions and it will contain all of those plus some extra stuff and of course out of the box will be something like irrational numbers right and so what complex number really are they're the biggest box that you can get which contain every other number so this outer box is the complex box if you want to think of it and any number that you can think of lies within this box so anything like 1, 2, negative 3, negative half, pi, pi plus, I don't know, uh, 3i, whatever you want to say so these were the definitions that we really needed to clear but before we move on to the proof we'll see the what multiplication really is so for example let's say I draw the number line and of course on the number line we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, six seven, eight, nine, ten. and so if I ask you what does 2 multiplied with 3 really mean well you can say that you know if you go from 0 to 2 that's a certain arrow or a certain vector and then you add it to, its, uh, to itself 3 times so that would be 2 multiplied with 3 or you can think of it as in the same direction multiply the magnitude by 3 by a factor of 3 so that's what multiplication is but this was for the real numbers <clears throat> in which we have a number line instead of a instead of a whole plane so let's try to extend this idea to a number to a complex plane where the x-axis are the real values and here and the y-axis is the imaginary component so here will be 1 2 3 and on the y-axis will be i 2i 3i so let's say i take a vector or I, I i take the complex number 2 plus i that would be the same as this vector which has the coordinates 2 comma i in, the, in this plane 2 comma 1 rather in this plane 
and so of course in general a plus b i is the same as saying okay sum a over here and sum b over here let's say i want to multiply 2 plus i with some other complex numbers let's say i plus 2 so i plus 2 will be something like this let's say this is the number a this is the number b number a number b now when you multiply two complex numbers what happens is that let's say there's some theta degrees and let's say this is some alpha degrees first of all for the direction what ends up happening is that the vector you get when you multiply a and b its angle is the sum of of the two angles so the for the resultant this angle will be theta plus alpha and as for the magnitude the magnitude of it will be the magnitude of a multiplied with the magnitude of b so just to give you an example let me take another complex plane let's say i take the number 2 plus 2i which is basically this certain vector okay so this certain vector and so this vector i can see will have uh, an angle of 45 degrees and its magnitude will be well we can apply the pythagoras theorem that 2 square plus 2 square and then you under root it so it's under root 8 which is the same as 2 under root 2 now if i square it well first of all the angle will be 45 plus of 45 so it's 90 degrees and then the magnitude will multiply by 2 so 2 root 2 multiplied by 2 will be 4 root 2 so when I multiply this vector a to itself, the resultant vector will be something like this. So it's a, it, it's a 90 degrees and its magnitude is 4 root 2. And so a couple of things that you can see from here is that if let's say I keep my magnitude constant, right? So this is my, you, you, you can think of this as the input numbers in, in the function, let's say x square. So one thing you will realize is that since I'm keeping the magnitude constant, then after squaring them, the magnitude will also be constant. And in, in, to be particular, it will be twice of what it is. So let me draw a larger circle because the magnitude is the same. Right, there we go. And so what I'm really doing is that on the input line, on the, on the input line, I am moving around in a circle and that is mapping on to moving around this bigger circle right and also one more thing to appreciate is that let's say i go around 180 degrees so i'm in i'm walking i'm starting from here and walking to here now this will be equivalent to on after mapping to the output this will be equivalent to going around this whole circle but going around 180 degrees since after squaring them the angles get added so in other words, if I do a whole revolution on the input circle, on the input values, that would be the same as going around uh, the output circle, but twice, simply because if I square it, then the angles get added to it together. So you can think of it that on the output plane, I'm rotating twice as fast, or I'm moving twice as fast. I don't think you have any idea how fast I really am. Now, essentially, we can come down to the proof itself. And so let's give the heading of proof over here i will draw a complex plane and these these will be the values that i am inputting so let me label this input and this input will be mapping on let me erase this stuff this input will be mapping on to some output on another complex plane so let me label this output and so let's take a polynomial a x n plus b x n minus one all the way to some constant c which can be zero can be anything and so one thing you can notice here is that whatever c is if i input zero if my input number is zero then on the output it maps on to some number c which you know without loss of generality you can see it's somewhere over here right now i will essentially make use of the circle thing that i that i that we saw earlier and so we can see here that the leading term over here is x to the n so if i input a really 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 large x that is if my magnitude is really 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 large which corresponds to a large circle over here in the input that circle will, will correspond to an even enormous circle on the output plane that will map to a much more bigger circle on the output plane so it's like if i am moving around 
in this circle over here that maps on to me moving around this enormous circle over here and of course if all of these were zero then this particular circle would map on perfectly to a bigger much bigger circle but since there are since these other values may not necessarily be zero we can say that you know it will roughly be this big circle so it will kind of it might dance around this circle maybe a values a little bit up a little bit down so but generally it will be some something vaguely like this now if i start decreasing my magnitude so let's say i am pushing this inwards towards zero i get something that is a smaller circle now this since this is a smaller circle the output circle the values that are being outputted will also squish down something like this and eventually as i'm squishing it further and further as i'm really really close to zero what it will look on the output is that i'll be really really close to c but in this process of squishing what i will realize that there is a certain input circle something like this in the process that goes through this origin and this origin is in fact our root because this is the value zero so we have really proven over here that there is a certain input there's there are values on a circle in the input plane that map on to a roughly a circle on the output plane and that circle goes through the origin in other words there is a certain output which is the root so for a certain input over here on the line it maps on to the root so we have proven that there is at least one root for any polynomial and now to prove that there are exactly n we can use you we can use the fact that over here we saw for x square the output circle was moving twice as fast so here since we have x to the n one whole rotation or rather i should say one rotation around this golden circle one rotation around this which which are all the values will be the same as going around in this circle n times and every time i go around this output circle oops wrong color every time i go around this circle so let's say there's certain point here which maps on to the root and then i go around then there will be some other point here which will also go back to the root because in this output circle i will be moving moving n times faster i'm fast as fuck boy since i will be moving n times faster i will strike the origin exactly n times and that's actually our proof we have proven that for any polynomial with degree n there are exactly n roots of course i chose to make a circle but you know it will be some sort of a shape like this but you can see that any shape it makes since it must shrink down to this point zero it will eventually hit the origin and you know we can repeat the same argument so this was a nice little loose proof i found on the internet i'll also link the website in the description um, yeah that's all for today so qed see you in the next i'm fast as fuck boy